not <laughs> ideal. It's like another one where, um, who else was saying this to you recently, where I think it's like one of the founders or he was like a big, uh, basically like the third guy in Apple. I think mm. you know this story as well, where I think he's like a founder of, like one of the founders of it, like the third guy that nobody really knows about, or basically he's like a big part in like the creation of Apple. And he sold his share in Apple at the time for mm. like $800 or something, or <laughs> give or take. Might yeah. be less than that. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> the I could, I could, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think any more words are needed on that. As Apple <laughs> yeah. were like the first trillion dollar company. So <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, damn. I sold my shares for $800. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was mad. And uh, yeah, oh, my God. I mean, uh, when you hear these stories as well, like another one I heard, um, where else did I hear? Oh, this is why I love reading books as well. I think I told you this one before um, about Toy Story 2, different mm-hmm. kind of scenario about the title of the chapter was, okay, a special code. Obviously, I know nothing about coding, obviously, but um, the title of the chapter was this code. And then the first like line was, our uh, first two lines were saying, when you input this code, it wipes off the whole system. I thought, oh God. I was going to say now so the chapter and it was saying something like nine weeks before toy story 2 was meant to be released like literally like a few weeks before um someone one of the programmers or one of the producers accidentally put in this code and it wiped the whole system <laughs> like everything oh, no. literally nine weeks before um it was meant oh. to be released and talk about luck right one of the producers um who was heavily pregnant at the time, she took her computers back with her. She used to work from home. Right. She was like heavily pregnant. And they called her up saying, um, I don't know her name, but it's got like, say Sue, for instance, like Sue, um, bit of a problem, such as such put in a code and actually wiped off the whole system. I mean, could we come to yours and pick up the files? Like, yes, yeah, yes, that's fine. So they went to hers, drove all the way to hers. Um, wow picked up a computer like a little baby like this like don't don't like, 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 like uh, a little baby to go all the way to all the way to have access to luckily she had everything like up to that point wow and obviously they took it off there put on hard drives and, oh talk about hard drives as well talk about unlucky but lucky obviously like such a, such a big company like pixar disney they've got like yeah. backups for backups right backups for days yeah all the backups crashed as well they got, like, like, they got like a special room just for like like <laughs> manic, like um like massive external hard drive units yeah. if you like a room and that crashed as well literally not, like, yeah. cause they thought oh it's pretty close five got back for it but they back up crashed as well I thought, oh god she had the last copy so they brought like a little baby back to the studios we boot all up carried on and toy story 2 was there for us to see <laughs> but <laughs> but another story in all love, of its glory exactly i love to, i love the toy story. well i'll talk about buzz like um Toy Story, they've making as of this recording, they just released the new Buzz Lightyear trailer, haven't they? Like a solo film. I, yeah. I need to think, I need to think, I see that. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, well, I haven't seen seen anything about it. No, yeah, I haven't seen this. I literally just saw this now on social media as I was recording since so uh, like two weeks before it came out. But it's a solo um Buzz Lightyear film now. Wow, yeah, and it's not Tim Allen doing the voice, it's Chris Evans, Captain America. Is it? Yeah, apparently so. Oh, yeah, he's in the okay. voice of Buzz Lightyear, <laughs> which is what I heard a little while ago, but um. I think they should have stopped after number three, though, personally, the Toy Story. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Like, yeah. I mean, the fourth one was like, obviously had that very, uh, was it, th- or was it the third one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah so it is the third one. Yeah, the third one kind of had that sort of nice sort of ending, didn't it? Yeah. It was like, oh, God, what's going to happen? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, and then it's actually, oh, okay, all right, all right. It's a bit <laughs> sad, but, you know, we can yeah. kind of deal, I can deal with that. I never saw the fourth one, just out of principle, actually, I think. But, yeah. Um. But to be honest, just talking about like the music in that, yeah. I think it's it's catchy, man. Of course, it, I you love know, it. It's you like you know, a friend and me. Yeah. me, exactly. It's like that I become, love it. That's become like a cultural icon in, in and of itself, you know. Exactly, um, I know. It's brilliant. It is, <laughs> and like off the top of your head, then before we like kind of move on from that, or we we won't move on because I love it too much. But what would you say are like some of your say maybe top three or top five favorite soundtracks from games mm-hmm. and also films as well if you had to pick so like three games and three films or yeah like i think it's it three, three films and three games like three separate okay so mm. um video games it's got to be it's got to be doom like the the remake of doom mm-hmm. um it's halo mm-hmm. and um do you know what it's really tight between 
uh, the Mass Effect, mm-hmm. Wicked soundtrack, and, yeah, and um, and Metal Gear, like yourself, yeah. I think, like for video games in films. I mean, I've got to be careful because, like, from nostalgic and just my nerdy side, yeah. um, I think Star Wars is a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that could just be, that's it. That is just me, but it is fantastic as well. Um, but yeah, so it's got to be Star Wars. I think, um, obviously, Gladiator is amazing. Mm-hmm. And do you know what? A bit of a curveball. I love Sherlock Holmes. Wiki soundtrack, Hans Zimmer again. And honestly, that <laughs> yeah. is, yeah, a lot of Hans Zimmer. Yeah, it's just yeah. John Williams and Hans Zimmer. They're only yeah, two composers. Two John yeah. Williams and Hans Zimmer. <laughs> yeah. So oh, we need we need a, we need a very good uh, film composer. Uh, is John Williams available? No. Is Hans Zimmer available? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's fine. We'll Let's get, get him. Let's yeah. get him. Um, yeah. So it's, I mean, I remember he played when we went to see Hans Zimmer, and he oh, played I was about to say that. Yeah. Mm. And the, you know, we just heard that. Dun, 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 and I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's fantastic it gets me so pumped i love that soundtrack it's brilliant Same. um yeah so it's, it's got to be probably those that lot yeah, yeah. how funny was it? i was so fancy the hands in the event we went to so good was how amazing. funny was it when he started off with just like just band in fun like playing like yes like, trying mistakes like, like, loving obviously but then thinking is that it yeah you know, suddenly the curtain dropped the hell like, like, quite like yes yeah. that's what we're talking about <laughs> love yeah. it but i remember i it told you well, didn't i about um Obviously, about two years ago, before COVID hit, where try getting a couple, a few tickets for John Williams, mm. and okay, I went to, get, went to get buy a few tickets for all of us to go to it again, like few, at least a few tickets, me, you, family, and everything. Absolutely, yeah. And um, I was in a queue for an hour and a half for that, not obviously physically, but online, just waiting for the ticket because I took yeah. it at nine o'clock. So I went online, bang, like right, just before, see so about nine o'clock, I was in the queue. I was in the queue behind some, some like three and a half thousand people or something. And I got to the top 50 after an hour and a half. I was like, yes, whatever, ticket, ticket, yes, yes. Sold out. Yeah. Uh... No! <laughs> <laughs> I've seen, obviously, he's both seen Hans Zimmer. One of yeah. the best things I've ever been to. Like, he's like my hero. I've seen him live. Mm. It was just incredible. And um, seen Brian Tyler, another one of my heroes, actually, who has spoken yeah. to you a good few times, actually, since over oh, the last couple of years. Such a cool guy as well, though. Such an amazing guy, and we're trying to get him on the podcast. I'm still getting, trying to get him on the podcast, Brian. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but he's such a wicked guy, man. And he's like the like, like, Cree Black Flag to Iron Man. Yes. To, oh my God, that's such a sick soundtrack, soundtrack as well. Black Flag, Assassin's Creed, such a wicked soundtrack. Oh, honestly, it's brilliant. I think it's actually quite underrated, you know. It is. Because people just say, people just say, oh, yeah, Assassin's Creed, it's a huge franchise, but it is. Um, but the, but yeah, but Black Flags in particular, that, that one is it's the best one like yeah. video, it, it's the best it's the best video game out of the whole f- franchise and it's the best soundtrack yeah so it's sure. just like it's a win-win for that yeah one. yeah absolutely <laughs> sure. and uh, i think for me the last person to see live um that is alive obviously is uh john williams and because mm-hmm. obviously as everyone knows or for, the, for those that don't actually know he's like literally done every classic film soundtrack we can think of Every single one. <laughs> yeah, to E.T., to Jaws, to Star Wars, like you mentioned, to Indiana Jones, Superman. to ha- Superman, <laughs> Harry Potter. I mean, you think of a classic soundtrack is John Williams. I mean, mm-hmm. oh, to see that live. Obviously, I see that we've obviously, we've all seen like other people doing them live, but to see mm-hmm. that the main guy do it live is what I remember. I remember I watched one actually of Schindler's List that um, they dedicated to him actually in uh, Vienna. Mm-hmm. And I think. If I'm not mistaken, I think Shin, the real life Schindler's granddaughter was actually in the audience watching it. And it was because that soundtrack is so powerful, so emotional, especially yeah. the, the story behind it. I mean, even even when the musicians started crying uh, half through the piece, because yeah. that powerful, I was like, wow. And I, I was crying as well. And it's that, that's just why I love music. And what we've seen before, I've seen, we've, seen, we've both seen this a lot of times where I get, we get so sad that music gets taken out of schools. Yeah. Because it's not important Absolutely. enough. Like, are you mad? Like it's like saved our lives basically. And well, it's like it's like when they say like it, it's kind of it's kind of strange. But if you think about it, back in the like in the thirties when they still had silent movies, yeah, they didn't have the voices. But the one thing that they did have was music. Music, yeah. And it was always so music. It was there before people were even talking in films. Yeah, so true. So it's like it's so if you think like it even take the the you know the doom gameplay thing and mm. whatever 
you take you've turned the sound off or just have the the gun sounds or yeah. just the ambience which in and of itself are badass don't get me wrong yeah but there's always that there's something missing there's like there's a disconnect like it's it's so music is so integral to well everything in yeah. life it's everywhere you're like you walk into a shop it's playing on the tannoy or whatever it's, yeah it's in the car you know <laughs> it's in the shower when people are singing to themselves <laughs> yeah. you know it's like um it's it's everywhere you can't escape it and you know whether people are you know actively interested in it or when they say yeah i'm not really into music whatever they 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 can't like say no i've never heard music before yeah <laughs> it's, it's so impossible. true yeah. so, and it's like and to, and the fact that it's become such a staple in uh in some of the biggest industries on the planet i.e film video mm. games and just even the music industry um it's 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 a cool thing it it's is really, really nice to see yeah it is i mean i think with the game music actually where do you where do you reckon actually the future of game music will actually be do you think it'd be like more accepted as well or like even more courses because obviously the courses out there now for it but what do you reckon the future of computer game music will be i think we're going to see a lot more I mean, as let's just say, I think we're going to see a lot more independent video game composers mm. like because, um, you know, you can buy sound string libraries recorded from Abbey Road Studios yeah. and all these amazing orchestras. You can buy them for like 800 quid and you can get the sounds yeah. without the hundreds of thousands of pounds it would take to to get these amazing musicians, which is a shame because it would always be mm. amazing to have them play for real. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot more people doing it from their homes yeah. just on a computer and just say there you go here's an epic soundtrack for you i think people are just gonna churn them out like butter which it, yeah. in a, it's, an, it's insane but it's also a bit it almost devalues it a little bit you see what i mean because mm. it's like it, it almost destroys the majestic nature of it like when you when you had when you see hans zimmer and john williams in the studio and they're literally conducting hundreds of people on yeah. you know playing all these amazing instruments and like and the sound and the fact that you know a simpleton like me can just sit at a computer and just go there you go yeah. i've created a yeah yeah it's, it, it's i mean it's great but it's also not great at the same time mm. it's like you know um but the, the fact the, the reason why it's great is that it gives people who don't have access to those vast amount mm. of money you know let's be yeah. honest uh, most of us don't and who have that kind of dream to want to compose stuff of that nature um but at the same time, it's a shame because a lot more real life musicians who play for a living, who require this kind of work, might, you know, might be losing out on some of their income, which is also very sad. But at the same time, it could be like, I think a lot of work for for musicians who play instruments or are very good at them are probably going to be, you know, hired to make sample libraries. Mm. You know, they're going to go into the studio and it would be the same thing, but it's just like i said before it's such a it's such a cool thing to see people do it for real mm. but i think we're heading towards a, a time where it's just it's not necessary yeah which is, which is a shame <laughs> yeah um, you know but, but i think about... there will always be there will always be a market for the studio musician though always oh, of course, there yeah. are always people who want to do it for the for the just the experience of it i want to i want to get into the studio and i want to play it live and i want to see the the you know when you walk into a studio and you see yeah. that amazing desk with all yeah. the switches and you get the nice panels and the nice amps and it's all soundproofed and the lovely cans and all this it's like i want to do that and i think mm. everybody everybody goes through that phase of wanting to do it for real yeah uh, it's yeah that's what that's we're gonna because <laughs> i was thinking earlier like it's like especially with the graphics now of games i know pieces are still better than um, console mm. in a way like graphic cards on, on real but it's like games are interactive films now aren't they i mean you're they playing are, like yeah. a real like character now it's mad i mean do you reckon in the future crazy idea that films and games would kind of collide somehow they were trying to do that many years ago there was a were game they? called yeah there was a game called um la noir it was <laughs> LA, yeah la noir yeah that's the closest you can get but there's like they it was called what was it called i think it wasn't Defiant, I think it was called Defiance, mm. and what they did it was an it was an MMORPG, but along the side of it, they um they produced a television series that would affect the game, and then vice versa. So the actions Ooh. of people in the game would affect what they wrote in the show, 
and what happened in the show would affect like a, an event in the game or something it was a, it was a very brave concept unfortunately it didn't work out very well um but that yeah it's been tried and then more recently with the xbox one release like seven years ago now yeah. me, um <laughs> it was like they did the same thing with um uh quantum break where mm -hmm. they had the game but then they had the show that kind of ran alongside it it was sort of telling the well certain story bits that you played through but i would i think it would be awesome to see that like actually done to fruition but like as you say because video games are kind of have, have reached that um film status mm. th there's probably a side that says is there any point in that? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, you know, because like you say, because you like, um, you get these real, like, the real actors who you see in films are now getting their likeness in video games. Like, yeah, Far Cry Six, you got Giancarlo Esposito, such a sick actor, by as, the way. He, as, yeah. Yeah, no, a brilliant actor. He's amazing. So sick. Yeah, he's like, and you, you got his face now. You've got him in the video game. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that. To be honest, we're going to see a lot more real actors like playing like pt you know yeah. we we're gonna get norman norman reedus we were gonna get norman reedus <laughs> yes. in silent hill but like and then we, we got didn't... i mean um so what's, that, what's that other game called uh, um, oh uh death stranding death stranding yeah yeah I, that's it yeah but i'm still pissed that we didn't got pt man i know <laughs> oh. but you know what how mad it is like people were sitting their ps4s for thousands weren't anybody if heard it came out because you know that, um, obviously, obviously, as you both know, a lot of us know that they cancelled the whole thing soon after that. Mm -hmm. But when they initially cancelled it, people were sending their peers for thousands, weren't they? Some of them online. Absolutely, yeah, playing it. they were. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my God. How amazing was that demo, though? It's like, yeah, it's the best demo of a game Ever. that never, yeah, that never <laughs> was, which is a shame. Exactly. I mean... <laughs> I, I can't lie, I shit myself so hard now. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, it's funny because talking about like music and that kind of stuff, it's mm. interesting, isn't it? Because most of it was just sort of ambient, yeah, like sort of stings and just like it's like it's not music in the sense like it's got a melody and a chord progression and blah 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 blah. But <laughs> it's still it it's still added to the whole experience. It's a similar thing with like Dead Space, you know, when yeah. it's, a lot a lot of the music is our our sound effects and it's like it's twisted it's 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 visceral and it's it's yeah. really it's really unnerving yeah and it's like and the fact that you can get scores and pieces of music like that that can do it without the conventional melodies and chords and a nice voice and all this and all that and the other which is lovely um yeah. but the fact that you can get that across with just like you know metal scraping on a you know on something mm. or on a yeah. grate or something it's uh, just like yeah yeah, you know, yeah. It's just, yeah. <laughs> It's like all the creaking steps. It's awesome, and, that, it, and it was and it was it was at its best during that playable trailer during PT. It was amazing, so scary, it's so scary. <laughs> it's like that's where a lot of people don't really think called Fo you, you know this, but Foley studios when mm. they that's when they even like call up the sound like the actual like sound if you were like the footsteps or stand crunching or mm. whatever it might be. But did you know this? I, did, I found out a while ago that you know like the punching sound like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Those old yeah. school sounds. The original sounds was someone punching lettuce. Really? Like, they punched it. I thought, I thought, like, <laughs> like that. It's like, what? That's bad. <laughs> yeah. It was like vegetable abuse. <laughs> yeah. like, what did what this one... lettuce do? But, yeah. I was on the one recently where the sound effect is that they're like ripping someone apart and more combo is actually ripping lettuce apart. They get like that sort of sound. Oh. It's, like, it's like, wow, so that's how they made this sound there. It's mad. Wow, but, it must have been a really nice ripe lettuce. Like it's yeah. just fresh. Because you imagine if it's not like super soggy and it's just oh, nothing there. Yeah. Like, I did not know that. That's amazing. It's amazing. Like literally just ripping it apart, like, like that. It's like, wow. wow, that's so cool. It is. <laughs> but I love, I love those kind of things. Are like it's behind the scenes details of yeah. being made, like sound and design that. and everything. Yeah. 